So I'm running this truck on 885 and I broke it, broke the truck, um, played with tuning and I messed it up. So, um, I'm, I'm, I have, think I have a solution though. I think I can fix this. I'm gonna, this isn't a how to video. Don't get that confused, but this is how I'm going to do it. Let me show you how. Wait, no, I just said, let me show you how. Don't, no, that's not how it works. I can't say how to, not a how to, and then let me show you how. I'm just gonna do this. This is, and then it'll work. If you wanna do this, do it at your own risk. So let me first off explain my issue. Uh, I've been running this truck on E85, and then I went to put some new spark plugs in it and I thought that maybe I would just you know do a little tuning on it and reset my long-term fuel trims now this truck is meant to run an E85 ish it has what is known as a virtual sensor and to me that just makes it seem like it's guesstimating because it just uses the purge solenoid and how much fuel you're using in order to calculate an algorithm 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 in order to figure out how much ethanol content your fuel has. But when you reset an E38 ECU, because this is a 2012 Silverado, it can't run on E85. You have to have at least less than 10%. It's less than 10%? 10% le less. It has to have gasoline in it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So. Since I did that, it's been running really super lean. Um, my HP tuners are telling me I have like 3% ethanol content, even though it's a full tank of E85. And I debated, I completely debated it on whether or not I wanted to drop the fuel out of this thing, flush it, and then just put gasoline in it and start all over. But then I realized that if I did that and this issue happened again, I'd have to do that all over. Um, so my solution to this is I'm going to tap into the fuel system and run an actual flex fuel sensor and then turn it from virtual over to a physical sensor and that way it will switch all my maps over whenever it sees the ethanol content in order to run correctly uh yeah so that is my goal and i'm going to show you how well this this these are all the things that i bought in order to make this happen okay so first off 2012 chevy silverado it is meant to run on e85 right off that virtual sensor but because I'm switching over to a physical sensor, I have to put that physical sensor in the system somewhere and I'm opting to do it like right at the rail. Like I'm gonna tap into the rail there where the feed comes in because this is a return list style. Um, that's kind of really the only place and the easiest place in my opinion to do it. Um, some people debate that you should put this in the return side, but at the same time, it's like that little bit of fuel in there that might be a little bit of a mixture between E85 and whatever else gasoline that you're running. Um, I don't think it's going to hurt the engine because that's why you have knock sensors and stuff. Like it's going to it's going to sense the knock and retard your timing anyway. Instead of it'll it'll correct itself if you if you get what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, basically we're going to tap into the fuel rail, and I'm going to show you how and what I have to do with that. Again, I said, I'm gonna show you how. I'm not showing you how, I'm just showing you what I'm using. Um, so, 3 8 fuel rail thingies, right? I don't know, and I'm not gonna list part numbers because that takes too much time and stuff, but search these out to fit on. Just type in the Google, like you need to tap into your stock fuel rail. What do I need? Like the, these are it, these are the things here. Got them on Amazon, not a big deal. Also flex fuel sensor, pick these up for like what, 50 bucks? And then it has 6AN adapters on each end of it. Um, I bought those separate. And then I have some 6AN lines and PTFE hose. You have to run PTFE because, well, it's ethanol. And then I have the harness here. And basically the harness needs 12 volt power ground and then a signal. Um, the signal we got to tap into the ECU. I have an E38 ECU and it's supposed to go in pin 40. So when we get to that, we'll go a little bit more into depth on how I'm going to do that. But for now, let's just set up the fuel side and then worry about electrical after that. Here 
is the layout that I came up with, if you can kind of see it. So here's the separator fuel rail, right? Um, basically off that, I did the 6AN adapter. And then if you can see that one right back there, that is a female 9090, female, no, it's a 90 female, female. That makes more sense, right? And then it goes into the flex fuel sensor out this way. And then all I have to do now is make a short PTFE hose that goes from here to here. And then that should um, complete the system there. The one struggle I had, get these, get the proper tool to take these off. I didn't have one. There's four prongs on the inside of there. And I had to take my pick and just slowly put pressure on this and just pin every single one of them up. It took way too long, invented some new swear words, but got it knocked out. And then obviously the new one is inside there, the adapter with 6AN end, and then just a 90 there. Uh, yeah, let's just, let's make up that line a second, complete this system. Proper wrench to scratch it up. Ah, tangled, tangled. Oh, no, no, don't, no. Okay, stay. Perfect. Um, power. Seems good. Not that good. This is backwards. I need. Oh, we're gonna do it this way. It's gonna work. You got it. Flush. Hey. Yeah. Cool. Oh, got it. Again. Why? Nope. We'll be table. Got it all plumbed up, tightened up. Professional clamp here holding this thing onto the vacuum line to keep it up off of everything so it can, can kind of vibrate around without rattling on anything. And then I cut the zip tie off just enough end on there so that someday I'm going to cut myself on that. That'll be a nice little treat. Next up, we got to wire it. So yeah, let's get to that. So in order to wire this up, obviously need the pigtail. Make sure you check your pin out. Double check your pin out and according to the sensor and to see which wire goes where. On mine, the red wire needs to go to switch 12 volt power. Black is a ground and then white is the signal that goes to the ECU. So I have some extra red and white wire. The black wire will actually run right up to a ground post that I have right there. I'll just put an eyelet on there, attach it that way. Nice, simple, easy. And then for power, I got one of these like fuse, fuse splice things. I don't know. What do you call them? Sure. Whatever. Um, and I'm going to tap into 48. That guy right there. 48 is auxiliary HVAC ignition. So that should give you ignition. Um, and then when you do that, because you got to route the wire through, make relief cuts in like here. And here, you can see I already did this. This one has my two-step on it. But otherwise, you're going to end up pinching that wire, and that's bad. So just, just relief cut that. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's start wiring this all up. Harness end plugged in. It's kind of hard to see um, to the flex fuel sensor. And this is the loom here. It runs up, ground wire breaks off, and then it goes to that ground source right there. Wire loom runs behind here, and then the power breaks off, and then it goes into the the fuse splice, and then the signal wire comes down here is right here, and then this is the J1 connector um, on the E38. 
ECU and I had to pop this top off, pop the back off, you cut the little zip tie here to loosen up all the wires. But then <clears throat> I had a panic issue because um, the connectors that I bought on Amazon are not the correct ones. And I sent out an SOS to my buddy Ryan and thankfully he had some. But the correct pins that you need are the Molex MX64. It's kind of what they look like. And then he also gave me <laughs> an end of a harness that he just chopped off. So if I really wanted to, I could just like pull one of these out and splice it in. But now I should have plenty, no matter what I need to do. Um, but yeah, huge, huge thanks to Ryan for having these. He's in my town. Just had to swing over there, pick them up. So now I have to splice that in and then put it in the connector. Got the pin in, so it's this white wire here. Pin 40, I got it highlighted there. I got the cover back on it, but that's just easier for you to see. So it starts on this side, um, one row up. I'm kind of upside down right now, but 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. That's the highlighted one. So that's the pin you need in order for the ECU to recognize the flex fuel sensor. Um, and to be able to program it into HP tuners to say that you have a physical flex fuel sensor. Got it all buttoned up and together. First thing I want to do, obviously, is check for fuel leaks with that new system in there. Just cycle the key a couple times. So I don't feel any leaks or anything, so I think we're good to go there. Next up, uh, I gotta modify my tune in order to just tell it that I have that flex fuel sensor in there. So this is not a how-to video. Like, if you want that, go someplace else. Um, this is just the way I'm doing it. So if you blow your truck up, don't blame me. Um, with that disclaimer out of the way, I am so, as you can see here, because my truck is already a flex fuel vehicle. Um, it's flex fuel enabled and then flex fuel sensor says virtual what i need to do is switch this over to sensor boom done file save as flex fuel sensor so that way i know that this is the tune that i added it onto added it added it onto um so now we're gonna save this and then we just gotta flash it into the truck new tunes flashed in and the one thing i'm watching right now is ethanol content and all i did was turn the truck on and i know that i'm getting a good sensor reading because now it says 74 percent ethanol so that's awesome before after I redid like the learn, the long-term um, fuel trims, it was saying like 0.3%, 3% around there. But now we're getting a good reading on that. So now the truck knows that, hey, I have ethanol in it and I need to switch over to these tables and these parameters in order to run correctly. So let's, let's turn the key, let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, buddy. AFRs. Right where they need to be. I shouldn't say AFR. That's Lambda. Lambda? Lambda. So one is always one. That's why Lambda is awesome. Because your air fuel ratio is always one. No matter what fuel you're running. Oh, that is so exciting. I am so happy right now. I can, I can smell it. It smells so nice and sweet. It's running so good. Sound of my people. I love it. I can't, this, it worked. Totally worked.
little test drive here to see if everything is on the up and up. Got my laptop right next to me. Just keeping an eye on air fuel ratios, timing, spark, knock, stuff like that. Probably spring a leak and start on fire. Who knows? Hopefully, that'd be fun. Not really. Safety. Wave to the neighbors. They hate me. like it was having before. Air fuels are right where they need to be. It rides like shit. Just looking at long-term and short-term fuel trims. It's not having to take in or out that much. So my base tune is pretty good on. that this sensor plugged into the ECU is a lot more accurate than whatever algorithm that they say that these things have as a virtual tune. Um, because this thing's running great, like a lot better than it was before when I was just running E85 and it already had, um, it, that, when it was running on the virtual tune. So couldn't be happier with that. sensor I highly recommend looking into doing a physical sensor if you're already messing around with HP tuners um, it's just a much better way to dial it in and then you won't have to be stranded on the side of the road kind of like I was before when you, know, you have to reflash all of a sudden and now your fuel doesn't know what it's doing so like I said highly recommend doing this and if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. Again, this is not a how-to video. This is just, this is what I did to fix it. Do your own research, be smart about it, um, and know that if you screw something up, you could, you could hurt your truck, could hurt your engine. So uh, yeah, drop me one of these, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.